en question. Le président. Please be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now in session. Today, the chamber continues to hear the testimony of the witness Etzen and commencing hearing testimony of a civil party to TCCP 244. Mr. I'm happy please report the attendance Monsieur of the parties Greffier, and Greffier, other individuals at today's uh, proceedings. Greffier, Mr. President, for Monsieur today's Greffier. proceedings, all parties Monsieur to this case are present. Mr. Nunji is present in the holding cell downstairs. He has waived his right to be present in a courtroom. The waiver has been delivered to the graffier. The witness who is to conclude his testimony today, namely Mr. Etzen, is present in the courtroom. We also have a reserved civil party, namely to TCCP 244. Thank you. President, thank you. The Chamber now decides on the request by Nguyen Chia. The Chamber has received a waiver from Nguyen Chia dated 8 September 2015, which notes that due to his health, headache, leg pain, he cannot sit or concentrate for long. And in order to effectively participate in future hearings, he requests to waive his rights to participate in and be present at the 8 September 2015 hearing. Having seen the medical report of Nguyen Chi by the duty doctor for the accused at the ECCC, dated 8 September 2015, who notes that Nguyen Chi today has back pain when he sits for long and recommends that the chamber grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to 815 of the ECCC internal rules, the chamber grants Nunji his request to follow today's proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs via audiovisual means. The chamber instructs the AV unit personnel to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that he can follow the proceedings. This applies to the whole day. The chamber now hands the floor to the defense teams to put the questions to this witness. First, the floor is given to the court counsel for Nunji. You may proceed. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honours. Good morning, Council. Um, good morning, Mr. Witness. I would like to ask you some questions this morning. Um, first, I would like to ask you a question about um, uh, your family. Um, before uh, the Khmer Rouge took over power, in um, your village and in your district. Did you have a family living in Kampong Chnang, Pursat, Takeo, or Kampot? No, I was only uh, living in Ampel and in Park Commune at the time. Did you know at the time anything about Cham communities in those areas before the Khmer Rouge came? Before the Khmer Rouge came, there were in the provinces that I mentioned before the arrival of the Khmer Rouge. My 
knowledge at the time was uh, that the situation on the ground was normal, was normal before the arrival of the Khmer Rouge group. Sans l'époque, c'était que la situation était normale. But my question was, before they came, did you know anybody from charm communities in those areas? Avant que les Khmer Rouge viennent, connaissiez-vous la situation des communautés charm dans ces provinces? Man. Réponse. Yes. Oui. There were many uh, people living in Ampel village Beaucoup at the time. Every house. Uh, there was many uh, people living in each house in the village. I, I think something went wrong with the translation, uh, possibly. My question was, did you know anybody living in Kampong Chnang? Pursat, Connaissez-vous quelqu'un qui vivait à Kampong pour ça, qui vivait dans ces provinces? Nyong Dam. Réponse. I know there were uh, many chams living in Kampong uh, Chnang, Kampot, and Batambo. Je sais qu'il y avait beaucoup de qui vivaient. Uh, but I never went uh, to these uh, provinces. Autres, mais je ne suis jamais allé dans ces provinces. Very well, thank you. Um, um, Mr. Witness, I'm not entirely clear as to which year you said um, the Khmer Rouge took over. Was it in 1971 or 1973? It started in 1973. In fact, uh, I was still attending the, uh, the school in 72, but the school was closed down in 1973. At that time, the uh, uh, Islam schools and the Khmer schools were closed down. Um, from that period and, and the years before, um, did you know a man called dans cette période, Sosman? Et dans les années qui ont précédé, connaissiez-vous quelqu'un du nom de Sosman? No, Réponse. I don't know anyone by the name of Sosman. Je ne connais personne du nom de Sosman. Are you referring to Sosman or Sosman? Sosman. I'm referring to someone who I think Question. was the father of a person called Matli. Croix était le père de dénommé Matli. I know uh, Matli. Je connais Matli. He works. Uh, Let, let me start with uh, the father of Matli. Do you know who the father of Matli was? Savez-vous qui était le père de Matli? Matli worked in uh, the the unit in the east zone. Travaillait au sein d'une unité dans la zone est. Tokmat et Tokmat. I will ask my questions maybe a little bit simpler. Do you remember question. the father of Matli? Je pose des questions un peu plus simples. Vous souvenez-vous du père de Matli? Réponse. No. Non. I don't. He did not live in Ampel village, so he Il might have lived in another village. Do you know what the role Question. was of Matli um, in the Khmer Rouge movement? Connaissez-vous le rôle qu'a joué Matli sous les Khmer Rouge ou au sein du mouvement Khmer Rouge? Matli was 
in charge of uh, the army with the top man il était responsable de l'armée avec the top man at and these two were usually together ces although i myself uh, did not ensemble, know his uh, real position mais je but i usually poste. saw uh, matley together Et with général, the top man do you remember whether Matli at the time was encouraging people si from Kampong Cham to join the revolution? Yes, uh, that is correct. Exact. He urged the people to uh, enter the uh, revolution. Um, is it correct that Matli was a charm himself? Est-il juste de dire que Matli était charm? Réponse. Yes. Oui. He was a charm person. Il était charm. Yesterday, Mr. Uh, Witness, you spoke about um, measures taken by uh, the Khmer Rouge as of 1973. You talked about uh, the Cham people not being allowed to have uh, prayers. Um, uh, women's hair were cut. You weren't allowed to speak the Cham language. Um, you were, in fact, uh, forbidden to practice religion. En fait, on vous de um, votre religion. Do you recall whether Matli was somehow involved vous in vous si taking Matt these measures? A participé à l'adoption de ces mesures. Réponse. From uh, what I understood, he did not uh, talk about that. Compris, il a pas parlé. I heard about the prohibition of practicing the, the religion, but it was not from him, it was from uh, someone else. Lui qui avait dit, Personally, I did not hear him saying anything Je regarding the closure of the Islamic religion. L'interdiction de pratiquer. Who was it then Question. that ordered these measures? Qui donc était ce qui a ordonné que ces de telles mesures soient prises? The order came from the upper level to the village chief and to the group chief. Au chef de village, It was from the uh, Anka above. C'est l'Anka au dessus qui so a pris the cette décision. Village chief and the group chief had to, uh, to the group stop practicing the religion. De cesser de pratiquer notre religion. Um, wasn't Matli himself, in fact, upper level? Matli n'était-il pas de l'échelon supérieur lui-même? President, uh, witness, please Monsieur hold on, on. and the uh, deputy co-prosecutor, you have the floor. Co -procureur Thank you, Mr. President. I think Council should ask a more specific question about his position. Uh, we know from his interview he was a member of a district committee. Some people might interpret that as upper level, some might not. So I think Council should be more specific in his question. I think we're always speaking, Mr. President, about upper level here, um, without ever feeling the need to be specific. However, I will rephrase my question. Do you know the position of Matli? Connaissez-vous le poste qu'occupait Matley? Réponse. I do not know his actual position. Je ne However, connaissais pas son poste. He was in charge of the East Zone uh, along with uh, Top Man and these two Man. were always together. Et les deux étaient toujours ensemble. Quand? Question. So, Le le and he uh, rarely uh, came to Ampel village. Il venait rarement dans le village d'Ampel. He usually uh, was at uh, Dambai district and Bong Mong. Il était dans le district de Dambai et à Bong Mong. 
He only came once in the while to stay in Ampel village. Have you ever heard at a later stage maybe that um, Matli um, Matli was appointed in 1976 as a member of the Standing Committee of the National Assembly? Yes, I do. I uh, know that he was a member of the uh, National Assembly. Uh, and she was considered uh, joining the resistance. Let me move on. Um, Mr. Witness, yesterday you spoke about demonstrations in 1973 or 1974 um, because of the measures that were taken um, against your religion. Um, is it correct that um, after these demonstrations you were arrested and uh, detained at Krochmar Security Center? Yes, that is correct. Oui, c'est exact. I was in uh, danger at the time. I became my a cow became sick after danger, the enfin. demonstration, so I slaughtered the ma, the cows and as a result, I was arrested and detained at the prison in Krochmar district. Et arrêté, au I was accused of killing an unsick cow. How were you treated Question. at Krochmar Security Et Center? Were you beaten? Uh, by prison personnel, for instance. Par exemple. They uh, did not beat me up or anything, no, but they had battu. to uh, carry out the Mais investigation first. And if that was true, then enquête. I would be uh, detained uh, for a long time. La faute, I saw many inmates were tortured during their interrogations at the building behind the, the detention house. Derrière, but uh, my turn uh, was not yet uh, ready for that, as the, the investigation process was still uh, underway. Do you know whether Krochmar Security Center was part of the district of Krochmar or whether it was part of um, the sector uh, to which Krochmar belonged? Dans lequel se trouvait le district de Krochmar. Réponse. It belongs to the uh, Krochma district. Il du district. It was a rather large uh, house. C'était un bâtiment. It was a story house, and bâtiment. just on the uh, ground floor, et au there were four levels where prisoners were detained, and both floors were les fully crowded with inmates. Um, do you recall to which Question. sector um, Krochmar belonged? What was the number of the sector du numéro du secteur um, dans lequel se to which le this district de that you lived in belonged? Ce district dans lequel vous viviez. Réponse. Krochma district extended uh, from le district de Krochma Kampong Tre allait de Kampong Tre Roka Canal jusqu'à Roka Canal that was the area under the Krochma district and if you were to make mistake uh, you would be arrested from these areas and detained at the Krochma uh, detention center district et si vous commettez une faute dans l'une ou l'autre de ces régions vous étiez incarcéré dans le centre de sécurité de Krochma Mr. was Krochma district part of the region or sector rather 21 que le district de Krochma relevé ou plutôt 
le district de Croquemain était-il dans le secteur 21? Réponse. Yes, I think so. Oui, je crois. Do you know who, um, after the liberation in April 75, was the chief of Sector 21? No, I don't. No. I don't know who was the chief uh, at the time. Je ne sais pas qui était le chef à l'époque. Does the name Chan ring a bell? Est-ce que Chan, ça vous dit quelque chose? Yep, yeah, Réponse. No, no. Uh, I cannot recall that name. Non, ce nom ne me dit rien. I don't know where he lived or where he worked. Où il Do you know who Question. was in charge in Sector 21 of economics, qui était administration, de, de education, de, de de and organization? Et de l'organisation dans le secteur 21? It was a uh, comrade say from the southwest zone of uh, present there and besides uh, saying I uh, do not know who else was in charge of uh, these uh, sections. Um, maybe I will assist you a bit, um, Mr. Witness. Is it, have you ever heard of the name somebody who was in charge of these um, functions in July 75? Someone with the name Uk Bun Chun. Uk Bun Chun, who was responsible of these services in July 1975. I do not know Uk Bun Chun. No, I don't know Uk Bun Chun. Question. Have you ever heard of somebody with that name in, in a present-day context? Uh, have you context? Entendu de cette uh, someone who à is presently a senator? Qui à Ook Bun Chun. Senator Ook Bun Chun. No, Council. No, no I don't. Maître, je ne sais pas. Um, let me go back to the village level. Uh, Kopsat. Who was he? Du village. Qui était Kopsat? Well. Kopsat was a, a village chief at the time. That is during the de period village, of uh, arrest. He was de there as a village chief. Il était chef de village. He was the one that ordered us uh, to lui eat pork. Nous a donné de du pork. We understood that he received uh, such an order from the upper level. Et nous il avait reçu cet ordre de was Kopsat a cham himself? Question. Kopsat était-il cham lui-même? Uh. Yes, he was also a cham person. Oui. But he actually was afraid of the upper level. Il avait peur de and les to my knowledge, uh, not long after, he was arrested and peu après, killed. Il a été arrêté et tué. Have you ever heard of someone Question. with the name of Meng Hun? entendu parler d'un dénommé Meng Hun? My hunter worked uh, for the security. However, uh, to my understanding, uh, not long after, he was uh, 
uh, rusted and put into a sack and thrown into a trap and drove uh, away. I refer to a, a person by the name of Meng in the village and he worked for the security. Have you ever heard of a man named Les Kassem? Question. Et qu'en est-il de Kassem? Connaissez-vous cette personne? The name Les Kassem does not ring a bell. Réponse. Les Kassem. Did he live in, in Ampel village or elsewhere? Vivait-il à Ampel ou ailleurs? Um, that's a good question. Mr. Witness, I wanted to ask you that question. Um, let me now ask you a general question about the period 74-75. Do you know whether at that time a um, charm movement existed, um, a movement which had as in its intention uh, to create a state um, within the state, un état, un état um, état. a charm state. Un état charm. Do you know anything about this? Êtes-vous courant de cela? No, I did not hear anything about that or any of such a, a rebellious nature. Non, je n'ai jamais entendu parler de cela ou de tel mouvement de révolte. Furo Champa. Furo Champa. Does that ring a bell? I'm not quite sure if it's que translated properly. Euh, vous dites quelque chose? Je ne sais pas si je l'ai bien prononcé. Yes, it is. Oui, Furo Champa. Bien traduit. Donc Furo Champa. Nobody said anything about that. Personne n'a parlé de cela. We, the Chan people, were afraid of uh, saying anything Nous, about Chan this because we were afraid that if we were to say it Car and si it was heard, then we would be arrested et que and entendu, taken away. Nous allions être arrêtés, hein? Did you know at this time anybody who was active in a movement to create a Champa state within Cambodia? President Chachlovain, you had a floor first. Oui, mettre copé pour yes, les Council besoins Copo. du transcript, est-ce que vous pourriez décoller euh, le nom du mouvement dont vous faisiez état Je ne peux pas comprendre que vous parlez de Fulero Champa, mais je ne suis pas sûr d'avoir bien compris de quoi il s'agissait. Um, F, U, R, O, Champa. Yes, Fulero Champa. Sauf erreur de ma part, le Fulero, c'est... I believe the furo euh, en rapport avec des races opprimées, was le front in relation de libération des races the opprimées. Est-ce à cela que vous faites référence? The United Front référence? of, uh, of Oppressed Races. Is that what you're referring to? Um, I'm, I'm happy to 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 guide you uh, where I have it from. Je peux tout à fait um, vous indiquer d'où je tiens. Um, E3 three slash three eight seven document E3-387, it's a statement of um, Ukbun Chun, in English ERN 0035026, French uh, 0044-1419, and Khmer 0037948789. This movement, I will quote, intended to create a state within the state because the Cham Muslims wished to occupy Cambodia territory on the eastern bank of the Mekong River to central Annam to create a state. This was according to their confessions. They had an organization, Furo Champa, under the leadership of Sabun Leskazen in Phnom Penh. Excusez-moi, est-ce que Fulro est un acronyme Est-ce que c'est un I'm nom sorry, à part entière Is Fulro un acronyme ou est-ce que c'est en fait un nom C'est dans ses mots spellés en capitales lettres. Capital letters, F U L R O. Dans le procès verbal. 
Donc on peut supposer so que c'est un acronyme. Donc on peut supposer dans ce cas que c'est un acronyme. Si nous entendions cette personne comme témoin ici, je suis sûr qu'il serait capable de certains qu'il serait en mesure de nous expliquer si oui ou non. Je ne sais pas. Je présume, donc je ne sais pas. Je suis en So you haven't heard of full road champa? Is that that's correct, Mr. Witness? Donc vous n'avez jamais entendu parler, vous n'avez pas entendu parler de full road champa. Est-ce exact, Monsieur le Témoin? Certainly, Mr. Witness. President. President. Please hold on, Mr. Witness. You may now proceed. International Deputy Court Prosecutor. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a couple of observations. I think counsel should be clear about the time period he's asking about um, in, in response to your question to Judge Laverne. This was not some secret, covert thing going on during the Khmer Rouge. This was an open a political organization, but it was in the pre-1975 time period. So he should be clear about what time period he's asking about. My understanding is that there was a full row champa that was part of the uh, a, move, a political organization related to the CHAM, and later on that became a part of a broader organization relating to ethnic minorities called FULRO. I think um, the prosecution is giving evidence. I'm, um, I'm just reading an excerpt from the statement of someone who was, in fact, um, as of July 75, Deputy Secretary of Sector 21. And um, he is referring to FURO, so I think um, if it was an open organization, then possibly the witness would have heard of it. Uh, but I, I presume, Mr. Witness, that you haven't heard of it. Um, uh, I would like to ask you something about a second charm movement called Kabal San. Have you ever heard of this? Bon, on est les gens. On est les gens. Non, I have never heard of it. Réponse non, je n'ai jamais entendu parler de cela. I have never heard of it. Je n'ai jamais entendu parler de cela. Let me ask you in 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 general terms. In the period 73, 74, 75, have you ever heard of any quote unquote rebellious charm movements? Entre guillemets, mouvement de rébellion. Cham. No. I have only heard of the rebellion at Kopal. Je n'ai entendu parler que de la rébellion à Kopal. Kopal rebellion when the Cham people de Kopal were fighting with the Khmer Rouge. It was the only incident that I heard. Uh, very well, let's, let's move there. Um, yesterday you asked questions about this rebellion in Kopal. Uh, you, you yourself were not there, but you had an in-law uh, who gave you information. Do you know anything about what caused um, the crackdown of that rebellion? What happened before Cham people were killed? Au sujet de ce qu'il s'est passé avant que les Cham ne soient exécutés, connaissez-vous la cause de cette rébellion? Réponse. Long time ago, I mean the incident, we were prohibited, prohibited. From uh, praying, from worship, from uh, fasting, villagers at Kopal rose up and uh, opposed to the prohibition by Khmer Rouge. Have you ever heard the story that um, 28 Khmer Rouge cadres were chopped to death by? Avez-vous entendu dire que 20 cadres Khmer Rouge locaux avaient été découpés en morceaux par des chams Président, please hold on, Mr. Winnes, you may not proceed. International Deputy Co-Prosecutor. Au procureur international, vous avez la parole. Well, counsel is leading the witness, and he's leading with a completely different account than I think every one of us have read about this incident. So if he's 
seized upon some misaccount of this, he at least should be quoting it so we know where this information is, is coming from. The accounts of this rebellion talk about one, uh, one person soldier being attacked, not 28. Um, let me uh, not focus on 28. Um, have you ever heard, um, although I'm quite sure I read 28, um, Mr. Witness, have you ever heard of many Khmer Rouge cadres being chopped to death by Cham? Council, generally, can you prepare, um, provide for the benefit of the record the basis for the question? I think that's what the prosecutor asked. Um, the 28 is, um, I will get back to you, it's either coming from Keenan or Poncho. Um, and um, Cham people chopped a sub-district guardway to death is coming from Uk Bunchun's statement. So I will, I will be more general and I will ask uh, the witness whether he knows anything about killing of Khmer Rouge cadres by Cham in Kopal. Savez-vous si des cadres Khmer Rouge ont été tués par des Cham à Kopal? I did not witness the incident, but I have heard that uh, soldiers uh, were chopped to death in 1977. I do not know how many of them were chopped to death. Uh, my in-law also told me about that incident. You just said 77, but do you in fact mean 1975? Answer yes, it was in 1975. It was actually before 1975, and in 1975, Cham people were evacuated because of the rebellion. But what, what did your in-law tell you specifically about killing of Khmer Rouge cadres on Kopal by Cham? How did this happen? Who was involved? How many people died? Combien de personnes sont morts? Bref, que vous a-t-il dit? Do not know for sure about uh, the event. Jam people who had a sword, who had uh, knives, uh, were killed by Khmer Rouge at the time. Only uh, these uh, people were shot to death by Khmer Rouge soldiers. Other people who opposed uh, the uh, re opposed uh, Khmer Rouge at that time uh, were not killed. Um, let me move on to how the rebellion was um, cracked down. Do you know which forces? were involved in the crackdown of the Kopal Rebellion. Were these district forces or were these sector forces? I do not know about that. The soldiers came from the districts. They were told to be ready uh, uh, to curb the rebellion at Kopal. Have you heard of um, military forces with um, heavy artillery 
coming from uh, the rubber plantations in the south, having uh, different kinds of uniforms, carrying heavy weapons, um, and that they were involved in the cracking down of the Kopal rebellion. I did not uh, witness the incident. I heard that the uh, artillery uh, were put behind the Kopal village. A été placé derrière le village de Corpon. What, what do you remember about this artillery? Et que vous souvenez-vous au sujet de cette artillerie? Answer. I could not recall. Réponse. Je ne m'en souviens pas. No shooting at that time, uh, but I heard a gunfire. De tir, mais j'ai entendu des coups de feu. And uh, artillery uh, were put uh, behind Kapal uh, in Soya village, and some of the people uh, were tied up at that time. Ont été à ce but do you remember, or your, maybe your in-law remember people, soldiers wearing military uniforms and carrying heavy artillery? President, uh, please hold on, Mr. Winner. You may not proceed, International Deputy Co Prosecutor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Again, uh, if Council wants to try to refresh and use a document that talks about these soldiers in uniforms, he should reference the material because I believe he's now mixing up the Kopal and the Sui Kling rebellions, two different events. Um, so it, uh, he's shaking his head, but none of us would uh, have to debate this if you would cite the document when you wish to put evidence to a witness. Um, I'm asking a general question uh, to the witness, Mr. President, whether he remembers or his in-law remembers people wearing military uniforms, indicating that these would be regiment or uh, sector forces rather than district forces. Mr. President, Council shouldn't be testifying about the significance of military uniforms. Again, if he has information he wishes to present to the court that's part of the record, he should cite it. He's leading here, he's testifying himself. Again, I'm not testifying at all. I'm asking whether he knows anything about uniforms of the people uh, of the military shooting with artillery. That's my question. Mr. Witness, do you remember anything about the soldiers being involved in the military attack on Kopal? I saw boats. J'ai vu des bateaux arriving at uh, Kopal and I noticed, Kopal. I noticed there were also artillery and there were fire there was a uh, fighting uh, at that uh, Kopal for a few days do you have any knowledge Maître of Copain. artillery? Do you know quoi que ce soit anything about um, how many millimeters mortars were at the time? Combien, quel était le, le calibre des mortiers qu'il y avait là-bas?
I do not know about that, um, Mr. Lawyer. I uh, do not know how many mortars or artilleries. Have you ever heard of Battalion 55 of the Sector 21 Regiment? 55 du 20 du secteur 21 et le début de la question n'a pas été entendu par l'interprète. President, uh, Mr. Cooper, President, Mr. Cooper, please repeat your last question. question. There was no uh, proper Elle translation of your questions. I certainly will, um, Mr. President. Um, Mr. Witness, have you ever heard of Battalion Merci, 55 of the Sector 21 du... Regiment? Bataillon 55 du régiment du secteur 21. I'm sorry, counsel. I do not know. Je m'excuse, maître. Je ne sais pas. Um, I shall give you the name of one of its commanding officers and, uh, and I will ask you whether you uh, know this name. Si vous ce nom. Uh, Hun Sen, Hun the, Sen, the present Prime Minister. Qui est le Do you know him? Actuel. Le -vous? Yes, I have Réponse. heard of the name oui, Hun Sen. Entendu le nom Hun Sen. But I did not know at that time Mais where he was stationed. I only knew that uh, he also savais. joined uh, the resistance in the jungle. Avait rejoint la résistance dans la jungle. Have you ever heard Question whether he, as a commanding officer, was involved si in the crackdown of the rebellion of Copal? participé à l'opération coup de poing contre la rébellion à Copal? Uh, again, Mr. President, I have, I have no objection to the question if it's based on something and not just counsel's theories or wishes. So if he wants to put this question, please cite the basis for it so we all know he shouldn't just be making things up in the courtroom. Well, the basis is actually someone who worked with prosecution for, for quite a while. Um, um, but, um, I think I'm entitled to ask that question, Je pense que uh, le droit Mr. De poser President. Cette question, Monsieur whether President. the witness knows whether Commanding Officer Hun Sen was involved. Si le commandant Hun Sen est-il impliqué ou non, et si le témoin sait cela. President, uh, Mr. Copper, please provide the basis or the documents that you quoted, in particular the documents which were admitted to be used before the chamber. Otherwise, the chamber will prohibit the witness from answering la Chambre interdira au témoin de répondre à votre question. Um, if you insist, Mr. President, of course, I will si provide you uh, the basis of my questions. It is E347.3, English ERN 01086027, which describes indeed um, the attack on Svei Kling and Kopal. Um, and um, 
the position which is being put forward there is that um, the attack was done ici, by Battalion 55, led uh, by Commanding Officer Hun Sen. Uh, and I'm trying to establish whether the crackdown was done by uh, the region or rather by the district. Um, so that's what uh, I'm trying to get at. Voilà. Mr. Copic, okay. can you repeat the reference? I'm sorry. Uh, pardon. <laughs> Est-ce que vous pouvez répéter les références? Please, can you repeat désolé, uh, the references? I'm sorry, I didn't have the time to e note it. I've noted them down properly. I heard E347.3. That is, that is correct. E347, uh, so not E3 slash, but E347.3. It is a um, human, rights uh, human Rights Watch report on page 20, English ERN, as I said, 01086027. The attack on Sveikling and um, Kopal is being described as executed by Battalion 55 of Sector 21. So that's where I have my information from. Maître Coupé, est-ce que par hasard vous êtes au courant d'une décision de la Chambre concernant ce document Maître Coupé, non. Vous êtes certain Il n'y a jamais eu de demande pour que ce document soit versé au débat et la Chambre ne s'est jamais prononcée dessus Il n'y a jamais eu de demande pour que ce document soit versé au débat et la Chambre ne s'est jamais prononcée sur ce request. Are you sure? I think the QS and PAN team did, that's why um, I know we didn't, but the QS and PAN team filed the request. Nous ne l'avons pas fait, mais l'équipe de QS and PAN, oui. Bien, donc, euh, M. Well, Copé, je pars Council sous le Copé. contrôle des parties. Il me semble que It le rapport du Man Right Right, en tout cas cette partie-là, n'a pas été admise right au dossier. Uh, uh, segment has uh, not been put on the case file. Well, again, as in other situations, you, you made me um, explain where my knowledge is coming from. Um, I was asking questions about which military forces were involved in Copal, and it seems that it was the, the forces led by the present prime minister who were, who, who were involved. Um, and the information is coming from uh, Steve Heder, which is, I'm sure, the author of this report, and who worked for the prosecution uh, for quite a while. We heard a impassioned speech yesterday uh, about how people need to rely on the investigation. This uh, rebellion was investigated. I've been searching for references to Battalion 55, and if, if there's a basis for the question, that's fine, but, but Council should move this document and evidence if he thinks it's reliable. It's a Human Rights Watch report. Human Rights Watch obviously was not at Copal in uh, 1975, so the, the real issue is what is the source of this information. Uh, and when counsel tries to present matters in this way and stand up in this courtroom and assert something as a fact when there's nothing in the investigation about it and it comes from a document that's not been put in evidence, these proceedings are distorted. Um, so we would have no objection if they move this into evidence, but we need to know what the actual source of this evidence is if this proceeding is going to be meaningful. As I said, the actual source is uh, someone who's considered an, uh, an expert uh, uh, for this court, who didn't testify as an expert but as a witness, and who was someone who was involved in the investigation for a long time. And I'm, uh, I have knowledge that, in fact, Steve Heather is the author of this report, and he is making the argument that it was, in fact, Battalion 55 that was involved. Mr. President, I'm pretty sure Steve Heder was not at Copal in 1975. So again, the issue is what is the source of this? I'm looking to, to see if Steve Heder's name is in this. I'm looking for, for sources. But the reason I'm having to look now 
And we have to interrupt this proceeding is because council hasn't put this evidence properly before us. So I'm here in the position of having to search this document. Uh, so I think it's entirely improper the way council brings these matters before the court. President. I noticed that you are on your feet. Do you have anything to address the, the chamber? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Ce que je voulais juste préciser, c'est que ce document ne fait pas partie de dossier. C'est ça le problème. Donc, ce n'est pas la question de savoir si on parle aujourd'hui de Hounsen ou non. La question, c'est de savoir qu'aujourd'hui, encore une fois, la défense de nous, Nishia, sciemment, utilise un document qui n'est pas dans le dossier et que la défense de Kiosampan a tenté de faire admettre, selon des règles procédurales parfaitement connues de tous, ce document et que le document a été rejeté par euh, la, la Chambre. Donc c'est ça le problème. La, le problème, ce n'est pas de savoir de qui on parle, mais de comment ce document est utilisé par la Défense, alors que la Défense sait sciemment que ce document n'a pas été admis au dossier. Président, vous pouvez maintenant procéder, Chad Salamagna. Oui, pour les besoins du yes, transcript uh, et pour l'instruction de notre copie, le, uh, les références du mémo sont uh, E347-1 uh, et uh, la partie index, uh, pertinente and concerne segment, uh, le chapitre 2 du rapport is, uh, de Human Rights of the Human Watch, Rights Watch report, en particulier in les paragraphes 3, 4, 5, 6 et 7. 5, 6, 7 et 8. Bonjour à tous. J'ai simplement you, une demande de clarification auprès de la Chambre, puisque j'avais cru comprendre des décisions précédentes, y compris dans le procès 02-1, que la question de l'origine du document et de la citation du document se posait lorsqu'on entendait confronter le témoin à la barre à un document précis, mais qu'à partir du moment où on ne le présentait pas, le document, nous avions la liberté de poser les questions que nous souhaitions. Je ne comprends pas pourquoi, tout d'un coup, il faudrait que chaque question que la défense pose soit basée essentiellement sur un document. Nous avons la liberté de poser des questions qui nous semblent utiles dans le cadre de la défense de nos clients. Pourquoi, si on n'entend pas opposer un document particulier, au témoin, pourquoi devrions-nous euh, euh, avoir à baser nos, toutes nos questions sur un document Donc là, c'est une clarification parce que ça ne me semble pas euh, être en, enfin, en tout cas la position développée par euh, Monsieur le coprocureur ne me semble pas en rapport avec la jurisprudence de la Chambre en la matière. If I may respond, the reason is you're leading the witness if you don't have some basis. You can't just stand up in court and make an assertion uh, that Hun Sen was part of an attack without some evidence. Uh, and I'm reading this now. There is no cited evidence here. There's a unspecified interview by an academic without even identifying the source. So for counsel to stand up here and and make these assertions without a proper evidence record. He's leading the witness. Yesterday, both of you stood up and objected when I asked the, this witness how many Cham people lived in his own district. Now you want him to be an expert on the entire structure of the East Zone. It's a pathetic and shameful attempt to cut the fence off trying to find out what will on this matter, and now the floor is given to the, to the lawyer for civil parties. Tricina, thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to make an observation on this matter. In fact, we, the civil parties, have put questions to civil uh, parties or witnesses, and uh, usually the defense teams would rise and demand the sources uh, that we quote in those questions. 
and to play a fair game, I believe both sides have to refer to the sources that you extracted or that you let them to your questions to the witness. Thank you. Um, on the record, Mr. Uh, President, what's happening Donc, here is an attempt to avoid evidence which might incriminate present government members uh, as the perpetrators of the actual genocides if there were any uh, in 75. So I think it is perfectly appropriate to find out what happened in 75, especially in trial villages, which is about to follow. Bien. Um, so uh, the defense is uh, perfectly entitled to find out what happened in 75 and whether Ubuntun and Hunsen were involved in the killings. I'm sorry to rise again, but I cannot let that be unresponded to. No one here is trying to do that. You are perfectly entitled to pursue that. You need to do it by proper evidentiary means. You cannot just make up things in the courtroom. So feel free to prove that. We have no objection. You need to do it by proper means of evidence, Mr. President. That's our position, not that he should be precluded from doing this. As said, it's Steve Heder who is implying this, uh, and you know him very well. There is nothing about Steve Heder in this document. He's making that up. President uh, Judge Fence, do you have the floor? La well, it cannot come as a great surprise. Um, I mean, this is how criminal juge. proceedings work. If you want to confront the party with something, if you put si forward an allegation, you have to cite the basis for this. If the basis is a document which hasn't si been admitted document uh, during the proceedings or actually specifically rejected, as in this case, find another basis or move on. And that's exactly what I didn't do because I know this is going to happen in this Exactement ce que je n'ai pas fait, je cherchais à savoir exactement ce qui se passe dans ce tribunal, vous cherchez à cacher la vérité. Le président, uh, counsel, you uh, have to follow the standing uh, practice and uh, procedures in this courtroom, so please move on. Oui, passer à autre chose. Something I would, of course, do in any other court, Mr. President, but I'll move on. Um, Mr. Witness, do you know how many people were killed at Kopal and uh, Svei Kling? Monsieur le témoin, savez-vous qui ont mis le personnel ont été tués à Kopal et à Svei Kling? No. I do not know no. how many people were killed. I knew people were killed, but not the number of those who killed. Is it correct that hundreds of Cham were massacred by East Son forces? As I said, people were killed, but I did not know how many, as at the time I was hiding in a house in Ampel village. Um, there was another massacre in 75, uh, wasn't there, in Trau village? Is that correct? Trau, in the village of Trau, that's exact. The accusation. 
Le Président. Président, le député co-prosecuteur du Hadfield. Co-procureur adjoint, vous avez la parole. Again, counsel is leading, and uh, again, I think he's got his information mixed up. Um, there was another incident in Spy Kling in 75, in Tria was 1978. If he has some other information, he should be specific. He shouldn't stand up and lead the witness with incorrect information. At least read um, your sources, uh, Mr. Prosecutor. I have it from Kiernan. Je l'ai ici de Kiernan, qui cite Poncho, um, describing a massacre, un massacre, uh, which was executed in pretty much the same way as described yesterday by this witness in November 75. Uh, I'd be happy to read it for you. Décrit en 1975, Poncho adds that in November 75, Chams in three village of Krajmar also rebelled. Then the Khmer Rouge tore the village apart with B-40s and smashed the heads of any survivors with pick handles. The corpses were thrown aside and left. They even stuck heads on pikes and exposed them along the banks of the Mekong. Poncho, page 153. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out whether this massacre in Tree um, si that was described yesterday wasn't actually in 78, but rather in 75. Mr. President, I have no objection. Again, he should read the document first, ask the witnesses if he's familiar with an event in Tria Village in 1975. But he shouldn't stand up and suggest that what he just read is in any way similar to what the witness described as happening in 1978 in Tria Village. They're completely different. Uh, so he shouldn't be characterizing and leading. If he wants to present and ask about what happened in Tria in 1975, go ahead. Orienter le témoin s'il veut poser une question au témoin uh, sur ce qui s'est produit à Trier um, en 75. Do you know whether there was a massacre question. of Cham, Cham being killed, thrown in the river si in 1975 in November? En novembre 75, à Trier, un massacre de Cham où les, les cadavres ont été jetés dans le fleuve. No, it was not in 1975. 75 was a year that villagers were evacuated from villages. We know for a fact that um, this French person that I was referring to, François Ponchot, wrote his book in 76. Uh, so at the time he didn't know what was going to happen later, so I think we can be convinced that it was in 75. Have you never heard any stories about um, the cruelties that I just described? Again, uh, counsel is leading. He's misstating the evidence. This witness has described one event that took place in Tria in 1978. This book describes a completely different event in 1975, and he shouldn't be leading and trying to uh, uh, mischaracterize uh, the evidence when he's asking questions here. Uh, this, is, this is utter deceit. It's done in order for us uh, to uh, proceed. The deputy co-prosecutor, please provide your uh, grounds for your objection so that we can uh, use it as the basis for our uh, ruling. For example, whether there was no citation in the questions or whether it was a leading question. Que vous vous opposez à la question parce qu'elle est euh, orientée ou parce que le conseil n'a pas cité. And if your objection is not based on any firm ground, I think it's just si uh, max and force between uh, the uh, two sides. N'a pas des fondements solides, et eh bien. We as the bench would like to facilitate the proceedings and the issue of a ruling based on the grounds that the parties provide to the chamber. To proceed in a, an expeditious manner. 
and you all have been in this uh, courtroom and involved in the proceedings for so many years already, so please try to avoid the relapse of uh, this lack of uh, grounds. Thank you, Mr. President. The ground is that counsel is leading the witness. He's leading and suggesting to him that an event in 1978 was the same as a different event in 1975. That is leading, a leading question. I don't think it was a question. It was a, a possible theory that this witness might be very afraid of telling what happened in Trial Village in 75 and rather shifts it to 78. But my question, a very factual question, was whether he knows anything of mass atrocities which um, are in certain details quite similar as to what he described yesterday. That, that's, that's my question. Does he know of any mass atrocities in November 75 in Trial Village? Council, I don't understand your question at all. President, uh, witness, you do not need to answer a question that you don't understand. Let me take a short break and resume at 10.30. And court officer, please assist the witness at the waiting room for witnesses and civil parties during the, the break and invite him back into the court room at 10.30. The court is now in recess. Sure.